Well, again, thank you all for being here. My name is Aaron Bolin. That's A-A-R-O-N-B-O-L-I-N. And I am one of the public information officers for the City of Scottsdale Police Department. This morning at about 7.30 this morning, we got reports from our school resource officer. A student had come and self-reported to the school resource officer that they saw another school-aged male subject enter the campus with a handgun. The school resource officer immediately put Cactus Shadows High School and Black Mountain Elementary School into lockdown. Simultaneously, officers from the surrounding area immediately began responding to the schools. This is consistent with the type of training that we do at the Scottsdale Police Department and consistent with the expectations we know our community has as well as our staff. Uh, it is very clear in our department that when schools uh, go into lockdown, there is a, a threat of school violence, that our officers will respond immediately to make that school safe for the students, for the faculty, and then continue the investigation on after that. And that's exactly what happened in this case. Officers began responding from all parts of the city for us. We had numerous officers from patrol, numerous officers from our motor division, our motorcycle officers, our canine officers, and detectives all self-reported and got themselves here as quickly as possible to begin making the school as safe as possible. When they got here, they began coordinating efforts to then clear the school methodically and thoroughly looking for anyone that uh, appeared to match the initial suspect description, which was a school-aged male wearing dark clothing, uh, walking with a limp, and carrying what looked to be a revolver. After about two hours, our officers were able to clear the school and unable to locate a suspect matching that description. While the officers were clearing the school, we had administrative personnel as well as our police personnel looking over some of the camera footage that was available through the school security cameras. During that time of review, they were unable to locate any similar incident or suspect information based on what the camera surveillance showed. Now that can be because of different reasons. It could be because the cameras were maybe not in the right angle or just not capturing the right area footage, which is why the investigation is still ongoing with what the uh, initial students saw and getting more information that way. Once the school was deemed safe and all clear was given, the school went into a modified lockdown, which then allowed the parents that began to show up to then be able to go collect their children if that's what they chose to do. I did hear from the school resource officer and our school resource officer sergeant that the school is hoping to resume teaching today, uh, but they are waiting for then the rest of the parents who are here to collect their children to go ahead and, and clear campus for, before that begins. So at this time of day, it, it may not be likely that school continues, but that is their hope and that is their goal that school would continue uh, at, after today. And I believe that's all I have for you at this minute. I will be able to take a few questions. Yes. So the question was, was the, was the report from the initial student credible? And we believe that it, it was. And we always have to treat them that way regardless, right? We always have to make sure that if there was a report, if someone's brave enough to, to see something and then say something, and we, we always encourage that, that we act on that. And we got to make sure that we do our part of when that happens, that we come here and we again make the school safe, and then we can investigate further from there of, of what happened and, and then figure some of those things out. Can you just tell us about the chairs and the table in front of the door? Uh, we saw on the helicopter video. Is that part of it to have some sort of physical barricade at major entrances or exits? So with schools going into lockdown, typically what we teach from our side through our school, school resource officer unit, what they'll teach to the, the students and, and the teachers will be to make sure they lock the doors, make sure they turn the lights off, and then make sure the kids are, are quiet in a corner somewhere or something like that. Uh, when I asked them about that question that came through a, an email earlier, that's not something that the Scottsdale Police Department teaches the schools or teaches the faculty here. However, it, it's an idea of, of creating those additional barriers is a good idea potentially in these types of situations. When officers initially go to clear the school, we're looking to go confirm that doors are locked, especially knowing that the school was on lockdown. And so if we come to a, a, a door that's locked, 
we're going to basically bypass it at that point in time unless there's any other indication that we need to go in that room. If an indication to go into a room arises and that room is maybe barricaded in such a way, then our officers are trained and have the equipment and tools to potentially defeat some of those barricade procedures to then be able to get into that room swiftly if, if need be. So it is a tactic, it is an idea that is a good idea if, if, it's, if it's a lockdown and, and the teachers and the students in the, in the room feel safe, safer doing that, that it's not a bad idea. And I, some people might say, well, what about if something else happens in the room? Again, we have, we have training and equipment available to do that. Most modern buildings and schools now have sprinkler systems in there, so there shouldn't be any risk or fear of fire going on. There's also fire extinguishers in classrooms. And so to defend against that threat, uh, barricading a, an entrance or a door would be a, a viable tactic to use. Can you tell us you know, again the description that that student saw and if you saw anything on those cameras that even closely resembled, like maybe they mistakenly saw someone that they thought had a revolver and it was something else? So the description was, was basically a school-aged male person that had a limp, was wearing dark clothing, and possibly carrying what looked like a revolver. And, that, and that's about it uh, that we have to go off of right now. And there are a lot of kids here today wearing dark clothing and sweatshirts and, you know, and, and different things that look similar to what the initial information was given. And so again, it'll be, it'll be a process now of going through that investigation, talking with that initial student that reported it, making sure that we have all the information we need to then go back through the video to find uh, any, anybody that else ma matches that and maybe go question them as well. But that's what we're working off of right now. I think that it is unfortunate that this has become somewhat of a norm in our society, but what I can tell you to help reassure our community here is what the Scottsdale Police Department does to prepare for things like this. We routinely practice and train for threats, active threats, mass casualty events. We train with our fire department on these things as well to make sure that our officers understand the expectation of them and are then trained to follow through with that expectation. And the expectation is this, that they respond immediately and go and disrupt and help to neutralize and make that school safe. They go to neutralize the threat if there's one that they can are, get to, that they can maybe have stimulus to hear where they need to go, and then they go and make that scene safe. We call it stop the killing and then stop the dying. That's kind of the, 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 the two parts of that where we want our officers to go in there and disrupt and or neutralize that threat, make the school safe, and then we can start rendering aid. So we're, we're, we train on this a lot. We train on it on a small scale basis. We just got done doing a, a block of training where we trained all our department on sort of small scale scenarios. And a few months ago, we actually did a mass casualty event training similar to an active shooter event at a school at Cocopa Middle School. And so we are very much trained up on this. Our officers are very prepared to handle it. And it's unfortunate that we have to have that training and that we have to do those things. But we are prepared. We are ready. Our officers got here as quickly as they could today. They cleared the school as quickly as they could. They made things as safe as they could, as quickly as they could, to sort of not allow further disruption to, to go on. Do we believe that student saw another officer, perhaps, with a gun in the school? Did I read that tweet from your department, or is that incorrect? So there was a, a tweet that went out to uh, from a student that they thought they saw a potential suspect at their door in a room in the 300 building and when that information came out to us we were able to quickly verify it with uh, communication we knew we had with some of the parents but also our officers movements that we had tracked through the school to know that when that information went out from that student from that particular room the officers had left there minutes before and had checked the door handle to make sure it was indeed locked as part of the lockdown procedure. So we were able to quickly verify that was one of our officers as part of the, the search teams that, that was that. Not the original report. Correct. Got you, got you. Correct. How, how long was the process of going through the, to uh, clear the school and 
and I know you've been mentioning kind of going door to door, but how long does that usually could that take in, in this case? And are you still kind of monitoring the look? So right now the all clear has been given, and what we have is it, it took approximately two hours for, for that to happen. The, the campus is very large. There's lots of rooms, lots of hallways, and, and things of that nature. When when some of these more active scenes occur across the country. Officers are usually trained to go toward the sound of maybe gunfire or the sound of screaming or, or, or those types of things. When absent of any of that sort of stimulus or those noises or indicators of where the suspect may be, things slow down a little bit so officers can then search more methodically to see if someone's hiding somewhere. And so that's why sometimes these searches can take a little bit longer but we were confident at the time that school was already in lockdown, that all the kids that we knew of were accounted for. I think we had found a, one or two maybe in some bathrooms uh, that were safe that we then escorted back either to the office or to their classroom. And so that's why sometimes it does take a little while is when, when it's not an immediate uh, threat that the officers are searching very methodically and very thoroughly to make sure they don't miss anything. And I wasn't saying that it was taking too long. I was just wondering right. to know what the time frame was. So. Well, it can seem frustrating. It can seem frustrating to the people that are in the lockdown in the classrooms of, of, of that feeling of why am I still here and, and, and that fear can be there too. But the reason for that is, again, we just want to make sure we don't miss anything, that we're being very, very careful and very thorough on it. And both lockdowns are officially lifted? My understanding is both lockdowns are in modified lockdown, which is allowing parents to come pick up children. Uh, and I believe that they're, I don't, they have to actually get with uh, Cave Creek Unified to find out exactly what that means for them, but modified lockdown is the last update I have. So the kids, I think, were in whatever last classroom they were at. The parents have to go report to uh, each school. There are tables and things set up for parents to come to to be able to provide uh, identification, I believe, and then get the name of their student, and then someone from the staff will go retrieve the student and bring them up to the front. Right, so the question was about what happens with, with lockdowns. Usually when a lockdown happens, it's, it's literally your lockdown in whatever classroom or room that you were in currently or, or last. And for some students, if they're maybe were in between going to the restroom, going to the nurse's office, going to the office as a, you know, taking something up there for their, their teacher, they might find themselves out on campus, but they are allowed back in as long as they can, can communicate through the door or, or something to, to get back in the classroom to, to make sure that they're safe. But the idea behind all that is to limit all that movement around campus to make sure that if we, we feel we have a threat and we're investigating what we believe is a credible threat on campus, that we don't have a lot of extra movement around the campus that our officers then have to discern who is who, who should be there and who has the right to be there and doing the right thing and then maybe someone who, who doesn't belong there or has ill intent. And so the purpose of the lockdowns is to help that, is to help keep people safe ultimately, but then also just avoid the amount of distractions there may be for the officers that are coming to, to clear the school. In your assessment of today, do you feel like everything went as well as can be as far as step by step with the school and with officers? And, yeah. From what I understand happened today and the way that the lockdown happened, how quickly it happened, that the student was able to, to see something and said something. That's ultimately what, what helped get this ball rolling very quickly. The school resource officer taking that information as credible did not waste another moment, put both schools in lockdown, realizing the, the severity of, of potentially having a person with a weapon on campus. And then officers immediately responded to the campus and began coordinating efforts to, to clear the campus. And that really is ideally what we would hope would happen. And again, having a very safe outcome with, with no one injured. I did hear one uh, young student went to the nurse's office uh, having a, a medical episode not related to being injured in any way or tripping or falling. It was a totally separate medical episode. Uh, but we were able, because of other procedures, able to actually get that young lady to ambulance crews to get transported and get care as well. So everything went so far as, as well as we would hope. And again, we just want to thank uh, the media for not uh, encroaching too far on, on campus or anything, because that's another distraction. Part of the messaging we also put out was that we, when, when, cases, when incidences like this happen, we just really want to be careful. We know parents are, are in an urgency to come get their child or come be with their child. But again, that can add extra distractions for law enforcement as, as it were responding and trying to make the scene safe as well. So 
Um, we can understand parents' concern for their child. And today, uh, parents are very respectful and, and handle themselves very, very well, and we appreciate that. And again, our message to that is that we're not gonna waste time. Our training and our, our commitment to the community is that when we have a, a similar incident maybe to, to this at another school, our officers are gonna get there immediately to, to start be, making the school safe. That really would be a question more for the the Cape Creek Unified School District. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. Since you guys have given the all clear, we'll coordinate with that. We, obviously, there'll be some coordination between the Cape Creek Unified School District and us and our school resource officer unit. But I don't have any information on that right now. I think the other uh, question we we saw uh, coming through some of the email chains was, had there been anybody arrested yet? And there might have been some some reports that someone had been arrested. I can tell you at this moment, no one has been arrested in this incident so far. Are you questioning anybody right now? The only other person we're kind of talking to again is just the original person that reported it just to make sure we have all the details and facts that we need to, to again look back at that video and look through some other information. Maybe there's some other students we may need to talk to but just going back to that right now is, is kind of where the investigation is and it'll continue to go in the next probably couple of days. The information I can confirm on that right now, as far as what the suspect description was, is just that it was a, a school-aged looking male subject. And that's, and that's all the information that we have right now. It's a fairly large school. I'm not sure what the total population of students is, but it's a fairly large school. I would imagine that not every student knows every other student here, uh, just based on the size of the population that I, I, would, I would imagine the school has. It seems like a fairly large school. I could get you exactly how many. I don't have that right now. I would say it was 20 plus, 20 plus. Again, officers from our patrol division, our motorcycle uh, traffic enforcement division, canine officers, and detective units from around the area as well. Did the students say where they saw the revolver on that person? The initial reports we have on where the revolver was seen was it was just being held in hand, but not being waved around or threatening anybody. Right. It's, it is unfortunate that these incidents don't seem to be becoming less of an, an issue. They seem to be becoming more of an issue, but right. Uh, we, are, we are prepared to handle it, and we do train on it regularly to make sure that our officers are prepared and know the expectations that, that the community has and that, that our own uh, department has on them for how to respond. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Anybody else have any other questions? Okay. It's all good. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Again, thank you all for your patience. Really appreciate it. Uh, normally, if I was in the office today, it wouldn't have been such a delayed response.